Hello everyone. In this uh, session, I am going to look at a couple of other methods which are targeted towards the numeric prediction. So, we will be talking about uh, two important uh, techniques. Now that we already uh, know the regression models, I would be uh, covering two important techniques which are slightly an extension of the regression models. One is the regression trees, the other one being the model trees. Both of them are useful for predicting the numerical variables itself. So, we would be uh, seeing how do I really add regression to the trees. So, we will be uh, parallelly looking at regression trees as well as model trees. So, uh, first of all, what are these regression trees and model trees? How do I really add in the regression to the trees? What are the kinds of benefits and uh, what are the weaknesses that are associated with adding the regression model to the tree model? So then we will uh, try to understand the regression modeling process per se. Once the conceptual aspects are quite comfortable, we will take up a, uh, we'll, we'll continue with the same example which we have uh, discussed for uh, the regression modeling so that we can do the comparisons quite comfortably. Right? Now, again, as I am, uh, as I have highlighted earlier also, I am also uh, telling you right now, there is no one single model which will be uh, uh, always better than the other model. So, which means we have to try different kinds of models see which model is more and more effective for our data the more uh, and especially on the test data the more effective it is on your test data i can use it very well for my prediction purposes now coming to the understanding when we have discussed about the decision trees we said the decision tree is more like a tree right? The decision tree is more like a tree. The root node, branch nodes and finally the leaf node. So, this is how the decision tree is coming. More like a flow chart. So, these are all my decision nodes. At every point, I have the decision nodes right from the root node. There, there are leaf nodes which are the final ones. And these are the ones that are defining a series of decisions. And based on that, I was able to classify all my training data. Whatever the training data I have used. So, I have uh, uh, divided the training data into this kind of branches and leaves. And for each of the branch and leaves, I have done a kind of a classification by looking at the maximum class associated at each of the leaf node layer. Now, what we are saying is that same process, that same mechanism, we can use even for numeric predictions also. There we have done a class prediction. We have predicted the group to which this particular data belongs to. So, it was more like a class prediction. But now, I can very well do a numeric prediction by making very few small adjustments to the, the entire way the tree is grown. So, the algorithm that is associated with the growing of the tree, I can make some small arrange adjustments to that algorithm and I can very well use that for the numeric prediction purposes as well. So, within that, we talk about two different kinds of trees, especially for prediction of your uh, numerical variables regression trees which generally implement what is called as a CART algorithm classification plus regression both put together. So, that is the reason it is called as a CART algorithm. So, we will see that in R it is actually executed as a part of the package called R part which is nothing but recursive partitioning. Right? When we are uh, executing uh, in R, we will be uh, talking about it. But the CART algorithm is basically a, a, a classification and a regression tree. So,
So it does not use linear regression method. But what it typically does is, it builds a tree like this based on the variables. But once it comes to the leaf, it takes the average value of the leaf variable and it uses that as a predicted value. So the predictions are typically based on the average value of all that training data that is in that particular leak. That would be used for the prediction purposes on the testing data. So that is what is being done by a regression tree. So first the classification is being done more or less in the same way the classification is done in case of uh, uh, a classic decision tree but here the only difference is instead of uh, taking the maximum class maximum uh, class it would uh, typically uh, consider the average value of uh, the numerical uh, variable associated with all the training data in that particular leaf node whereas when we look at the model tree the tree is grown more or less similar but instead of simply taking the average at each of the leaf nodes and using that as a prediction, here it builds a multiple regression model. At each of the leaves, there is a separate multiple regression model that is being built where by taking the examples, uh, by taking the training data in each of the leaf nodes. So if there are 10 different leaf nodes in the whole tree, then we see 10 different regression models are getting built. So sometimes it becomes more difficult to understand. But of course, it's better that I can use it because the accuracy of the model is much higher. Instead of simply taking the average at the leaf nodes, it is trying to build a, a model between the dependent variables and the predictors at each of the leaf nodes. So that's where the, the betterment of the model can very well come up. Now, coming into the process, if I have to add a regression to the trees. So, we have to always look at it as a kind of an alternative to the regression model that we have created earlier using the LM function. Few important things here. So, it's a combination of both regression, which is used for modeling numeric data, along with the decision trees which are primarily doing the partitioning of the data. So that's where probably I should see that the model should be much more efficient compared to the typical regression model. In regression we have said that whatever the features that we have to include into the model those features need to be specified by the user. Not only features, the form in which the features have to be presented. Do I need to take a square of them? Do I need to uh, take square root of them or logarithm of them? The kind of transformations I have to do on those features. So based on my subject knowledge, I have to give all those features to the model. Whereas here, the tree is split the, the, the splitting of the data is typically done in an automated way itself. So which features to be included and which features not to be included is typically done on an automated way itself. So especially if I have good large number of features and uh, uh, to, to model my dependent variable, rather than relying on the linear regression model, I can very well look forward towards the regression trees. And at the same time, here the user really do not need to specify the model. Here because uh, I just need to supply all the variables. The feature selection is done automatically. So which means the model need not be specified in advance. So at least for some kinds of data, I should really see that this model is more comfortable in terms of generating the result much better than a typical linear regression model. And because the tree model is purely based on the logical division, divide and conquer kind of a strategy, there is nothing called statistics kind of interpretation, 
So there's nothing uh, called R squared explicitly. There's nothing called p values, significance levels, etc. So the knowledge of statistics is not that much required to interpret the model. So that's also a kind of a positive thing that is coming out through this max, through this uh, regression trees. But on the flop side, even they are not that heavily used in the industry. The training data should be sufficiently large. That is one reason the, the unless my data is too huge, I cannot use, I cannot trust these models to a large extent. So there's a lot of training data that is very much required. And uh, it cannot give me, see in the regression model, I was telling you each variable, what is the size of the coefficient to what extent it will impact the dependent variable what is the strength of each variable in predicting the dependent variable so each variable's impact can easily be understood and communicated but in case of this individual features impact is very difficult to communicate so that's also uh, uh, one of the potential drawbacks of using regression trees and interpretation wise, in a linear regression model, it is much, much easier to provide the interpretation of the equation saying these fact, these variables impact the decision variable, these variables do not impact the decision variable. Things are very straightforward. But here, that's not the case. So, there are some positives, but at the same time, uh, there are equally a good amount of weaknesses associated with the model. So, we have to take a call at any point in time uh, based on what is the level of accuracy so for us the most important part is apart from explainability interpretability etc what is the kind of accuracy that is uh, that it is giving when i am executing this model on the test data that would be the most primary important uh, aspect for me so it is generally suited for tasks one where features are too many, where I may not be able to typically uh, specify the complete model. So the relationships are also not simple linear relationships. There could be complex non-linear relationships that are existing between the variables. I really want to create that kind of a difference by bringing in some kind of changes as a part of the uh, transformations of the variables. In those cases, I can really think of evaluating the regression trees and one more important uh, scenario where i can look at is initially we have uh, made an uh, we have talked about that in case of regression it assumes that the dependent variable needs to be normally distributed whereas in case of regression trees there is no such kind of assumption so if my dependent variable is heavily deviating from normality, then I can think of looking at uh, the regression trees or model trees compared to using the regression models itself for the prediction purposes. Now coming to the overall modeling process associated with the regression, the initial part, the tree building process. So it starts at the root node, data is partitioned, divide and conquer strategy. So, it, the intention is once the group is split, once the group is divided, it looks at the homogeneity of the group. So, after the split versus the before the split, after the splitting of the group is done, the homogeneity has to be much, much higher for the particular group. Now, instead of using entropy, if it had been a uh, a uh, classification model, we were using entropy as a measure of homogeneity or entropy reduction or information gain, we have used as the measures of, as a measures of uh, homogeneity of the group. But because this is a numerical variable here, I cannot use the concepts of entropy or information gain. Rather, I am measuring that using some of the variables like some of the computations like variance, 
standard deviation or absolute deviation from the mean. So the lesser and lesser is the standard deviation, the more homogeneous is the group and vice versa. So that's the way we are trying to assess the homogeneity of the group. Or we are looking at mean absolute deviation from the mean. So the most commonly used ones for splitting is standard deviation reduction, which is looked at as the standard deviation before the split, if I'm talking about T observations, then let's say it has been split into different observation, different groups, each group containing TI observations separately. So I am taking the proportion of the observations in each group to the total proportion, multiplying it with the standard deviation of that particular group value. So it, and on the top of it, I am looking at what is the level of standard deviation reduction that has occurred before the split versus the after the split. When there is a drastic reduction in the standard deviation, then obviously I will go ahead and do the splitting. When there is no reduction in the standard deviation, even after the split, that particular split is not accomplished. So when the tree is uh, stopped growing, this is where my regression modeling process is done. So I will be looking at uh, the averages associated with each of the leaf nodes and based on that, the predictions are typically being done. So that is what is accomplished through a regression tree. Whereas in case of a model tree, there is one more step that is going further, wherein instead of just taking the plain averages at each of the leaf nodes, we are also building a linear regression model based on the data at each of the leaf nodes, considering the dependent variable as well as the independent variables at each of the leaf nodes. So that is how the whole process is taken care of. What we can really look at is, we can, we can uh, typically uh, look at an example, the same example, the insurance related, charges related example, which we have actually used in case of regression model. The same thing I want to use, which means this process is already done. This is already done. Training and testing data also created. Now we will directly do the training of the model. So initially, we'll start with a regression tree model. The regression tree model is available as a part of the R part package. So though there are so many, uh, any decision tree models can very well be uh, used. Any decision tree packages can very well be uh, used for uh, regression trees as well. But R part is one very comfortable kind of a package because it is implementing to a large extent the classification and regression tree algorithm. So that's the reason we can go ahead with the R part package, uh, which is recursive partitioning. And I can build my model using the R part function, dependent variable tilde independent variables providing the data. So I'll get a regression tree model object. So there are so many functions in this R part package especially for visualizing and evaluating the R part model. So that's the reason we can very well go ahead in terms of using that. So let me uh, extend it from here itself. So R part package, let's install. Okay, the R part package is installed. So we are loading the R part as well. Okay, so once we have installed the R part package, I can give a model. Let me call it as model 2 
where I am doing R part, the dependent variable, I will do it on the training data itself. The dependent variable is ln charges, till day the independent variables are dot, all of them. Comma, my data is train data. My data is train data. So the model is built. So let's uh, look at uh, the basic information regarding the model. So let me type it model 2. Now this is uh, the tree structure that got created. Root. 938 observations were there at the root. Now if we try to understand this, the splitting came like this. Initially there were 932 application, uh, observation. So the first split is smoker equal to no where there are 739 observations. So the tree started like this. This is the root node. Got split. Smoker is no. This is smoker is yes. So there are 739 observations out here. And this became Smoker is S, is 199 observations out here. So the data got split like this. Now within the smoker equal to no, again we are talking of age less than 32.5 versus age greater than 32.5. So this is age less than 32.5. This is age greater than or equal to 32.5. Now again, the 739 people got broken down. 273 of them are in this range. 466 are here. Right? Now, within the age, again there is one more grouping out here. Children less than 0.5. Children greater than or equal to 0.5. So here, children less than 0.5, children greater than or equal to 0.5. Again, out of this 273, I could see these are 144 guys, these are 129 people. Now, again, within the children, age less than 22.5, age greater than or equal to 22.5. Now, this list is 88 and 56. So, this is how the tree got split. Now, the same way you can very well go with the others. In age greater than 32.5 out here, we are again putting another clause age less than 48.5, age greater than or equal to 48.5. Age less than 48.5, age greater than or equal to 48.5. Again, out of these 466 people, 229 are here, 237 are here. One more classification. And in the smokers, we are talking of some people who are having BMI less than 30.01, BMI greater than or equal to 30.01. So this is the overall tree that got split, right? So now what you see here as a part of the model is, you look at the model. For each node in the tree, the number of examples reaching the decision point, we have already uh, talked of. So we are seeing these are the number of uh, training data that have come into each of the splitting. So that list is typically shown to us. Now, the first most important predictor happens to be the smoker status. The one that has come first in the tree, that is the most important. So if the, if the person is a smoker, the charges are much higher compared to if the person is not a smoker. And all the ones that are mentioned with stars, they are all leaf notes. So this is a leaf node, this is a leaf node. So these are 
three, four, five, six, seven leaf nodes are there overall. And I can very well get all these things if you see here. First thing, it's a split. So we are talking of the node here. Then we are talking about on what basis the split is done. So the smoker equal to no age less than 32.5. This is the split done. Then it's talking about N, which are the number of observations that are there in that uh, particular branch. Then it is giving me the deviance, the, the deviation that is coming out in each case. So the standard deviation that is coming out here is 29.76. Here it is 18.46 and so on. And based on that, it's also giving the predicted Y values. So the predicted charges for each of the groups are coming out to be something like this. So for this leaf node, the predicted charges are this much. So it is as good as saying for the person who is not a smoker, whose age is less than 32.5, who have less than 0.5 children, and who is still less than 22.5, very, very young, the charges are 7.61, very, very less. Whereas when I am looking at on the highest side, the person who is a smoker and whose BMI is greater than 30.01, for them, the charges are approximately 10.62. So that's how the model is typically showcasing. And all the stars are terminal nodes. So this is one thing that we are getting through the model. And if I can want, if I want further details, I can even go with a summary. Summary is giving me much more detailed information. So the R part, much more detailed wise, it is telling me. So these are the splits that have overall occurred, right? Uh, so we are talking about uh, the splits at each of the levels and what is the level of uh, uh, proportions that are there at each of the splits. Variable importance wise, you could see that the smoker, smoker status is very high variable, important variable, followed by age. In terms of determining uh, your uh, log charges, the smoker status is very important variable followed by age, followed by children, if I look at it on a 100% kind of a note, and finally the BMI. So which means the, your, the, the location where you are residing, the gender, these are the things that are not at all Im Im impacting the overall uh, 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 log charges at all. So the way it started, if you see the node number one, this is the way it uh, went ahead in terms of the process. So it, uh, it, it shows the, what is the way in which the whole process has gone ahead. We really don't need to bother too much on that. So this is how the whole process has uh, progressed. But what is very much important for us uh, when we are uh, looking at the summary is a slight extension in terms of how it has uh, given the variable importance, which variable is highly important versus the next versus the next. So that's one part that we can very well understand from this uh, particular summary. More detailed summary, tree spit, overall measure of the importance of the features. So it has given which features are more important versus which features are real, relatively unimportant. Now the decision tree can also be visualized. There is a visual representation of the tree altogether, the diagram which I have drawn. I can get it uh, drawn through the package itself. So for that, I would like to use the package called rpart.plot. So if I am installing the package, R part dot plot. So this is purely for the plotting of the R part package. Okay. So I am using the simple function. First let me load this. R part dot plot. So I am loading this library. I am using a simple function R part dot plot. 
which will take the object that I have created through R part itself, which is model 2. The model 2 I can very well take and I can very well get the plot done. Right, in case I want to round it, I can very well round it, but let me say oh, this is looking slight odd. So I can get it rounded for better representation. So I can say digits equal to 2 or 3. Still, it is showing on a much, much bigger note. So you could see here, smoker status is no. So this side it is yes, this side it is no. Now it is coming out, then it is coming out like, uh, okay, if it is yes, there is almost 78%, 78.8% uh, 78 of the people have a smoker statistics of yes, and 21.2 uh, are having no. Okay, smoker is no. Smoker no, when I am saying yes, they are not smokers. So 78.8% of them are not smokers. 21.2% of them are smokers. Then I am looking at age less than 32.5. Out of this 78.8, 29.1 of them are here, 49.7 of them are here. So that's how the whole tree gets built for us. Finally, you could see that these are the final leaf nodes. So we can get this kind of a representation in a much better form, which you can copy and paste as a part of your publications as well which will help you in visualizing the tree much more better. Right? Then, the other part is, now I have to evaluate the performance of the model. So, because of that reason, pred2, I am doing a prediction now, where I am saying predict model2, you predict it with your test data. So based on that, you can find out the correlation between PRED2 and test data dollar LN charges. Where you are trying to find the correlation between your predicted values and the actual values. <laughs> Surprisingly, the correlation has come slightly higher compared to your initial case. Right in your uh, original case, when you have used the actual linear correlation, linear regression, the correlation between the predicted versus actuals was around, if you look at, uh, if I try to bring in with respect to model 1, which was using the regression model, this data dollar ln charges squared, when I am looking at it with respect to model 1, Oh, PRED1, sorry. PRED1 was something, uh, PRED, PRED. So it was around 81 correlation squared, R squared. Whereas in this case, the R squared came out to 83. So obviously my regression tree for this example has done a slightly better job for the same data the regression tree has done a slightly better job compared to using my regression model altogether. Then, I can, I want to improve the model. So, we have looked at the summary statistics of the predictions as well. So, let me do summary of PRED2. So, when you are looking at the summary statistics of the prediction, the minimum value is 7.6, the maximum value is 10.2. So this is how the actuals versus the predicted are typically working out and I can also look at the correlation which I have got it as 83% in this case whereas uh, when I have used the regression model it ended up at 81%. So obviously this is looking like slightly better uh, compared to that of my regression model. But at the same time sometimes people say apart from these two you also look at the mean absolute error which talks about on an average what is the distance between the predicted value and the true value. Though we don't have a direct function for that, we can very well uh, write a function mean absolute error. So I will take the actual and the predicted because it is saying 1 by n times sigma mod ei. 
So that's the simple thing. So I'll take a function containing two variables, the actual and the predicted. So these are the two things that are going as a part of the arguments of my function. So I am simply taking mean of the absolute values of the actual minus predicted. So I am simply taking the mean of the absolute values of the actual minus the predicted and that is what I am calling as a part of my function. So I can very well uh, find out the mean absolute error so the mean absolute error of my pred2 as well as uh, the test data dollar ln charges. So when I am looking at the mean absolute error here, it's around 0.23. And if I am trying to do it with respect to pred1 or probably pred, then it is 0.26. So even the mean absolute error in this case is slightly lesser compared to the mean absolute error of the regression model as well. So the R squared is also higher. The mean absolute error is lower. So if I have to choose between the regression model and regression tree uh, for this kind of a data, for the prediction purpose, I would definitely uh, be going with uh, the regression tree itself rather than the regression modeling. However, I can still improvise the model wherein I am trying to see the model tree instead of a regression tree. So instead of taking simple average at the leaf nodes, now there is a kind of a regression model that would be built at all the leaf nodes. So for this we are going with M5 algorithm which is there as a part of our Weka package. So we have already uh, installed the rweka package so let me simply load that rweka package okay so the rweka package is loaded and i would be using m5p function m5p function is nothing but uh, m5 prime which is the implementation of the model tree so let me call it model 3, which is M5P. I'll take my dependent variable. The dependent variable is LN charges. And the independent variable that I'm considering here are all of them. And the data that I'm considering is train data. So that's how my model 3 is getting built, right? So now I can look at what the model 3 has come out. Now if you see there is a lot more that has come out. Oh, it's a pruned model tree. If you see here, it has considered only two, three things. Smoker, yes, less than 0.5. And similarly, smoker is greater than 0.5. Similarly, I am looking at BMI less than 30.01, BMI greater than 30.01. So the overall 739 records coming out here, BMI greater than less than 30, greater than 30. So the formula that is coming out is something like this. So LM1 is nothing but 0 0.0409 times age minus 0 0.0796 times sex equal to male, 0 0.0003 times BMI, 0 0.13 times children, so on and so forth. And similarly, when I am coming to this uh, LM charges uh, for uh, LM number 2, which is nothing but someone who is a smoker with BMI less than 30.01, this is the kind of formula that is coming out. And for people who are uh, having a BMI more than 0.0, 30.01, this is the formula that is typically working out. So that's how the whole tree got split completely differently. 
So there is a linear model that is shown in uh, the all the linear three different formulas are typically shown in the output. So there could be n number of uh, models that can come out depending on how the tree got created. There, there could be different models that are coming out at each of the outputs. Now I can very well look at the summary associated with the output out here. So I'll say model 3 summary which says the correlation coefficient is 0 0.90. The mean absolute error is 0 0.202. This is on the training data. I don't need to bother too much about it. But I have to do the testing of it on the test data. But by looking at it on the training data, it looks like it might have improvised my model. Fair enough. I want to really uh, see if I can plot the model. Let me just see. Plot of model 3. So there is nothing uh, that is coming as a part of the model plotting. So I can do the prediction. So let me call it as pred3 wherein I am doing the predict and I am using my model 3 and the input is test data and I can very well do the correlation between pred3 comma test data dollar ln charges squared so this is coming out to 87 much better than the regression model as well as uh, the regression uh, uh, tree model this is coming out to be much much better because the correlation has uh, the, the, the r squared has actually uh, improved for this particular model making it almost 87.2% and even when I am looking at mean absolute error in this case, the predicted values are PRED3. The actual values are test data dollar log charges. So the mean absolute error has actually come out to 0.1855, which is also reduced compared to the other two models, which can also give me a kind of indication that this model has really improved for this kind of a data explicit, explicitly this model has improved our estimate compared to uh, either the regression model or even a regression tree algorithm but what we need to understand is no model is perfect each model has its own advantages and disadvantages for any kind of a data which model is more appropriate we have to just run all the models and uh, very well look at how it is performing on the test data. There is no theoretical way of saying this particular model is more efficient compared to this particular model. So these are some of the things which I thought we should uh, look at as a part of this session. We have focused uh, in detail by considering an appropriate example. If you have any further queries regarding the same, you can very well get back to me by giving me a call on the number that I have given below or you can even send in an email at vamsizar at the rate of facegurus.com. Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.